welcome to Go For Your Life. Thank you so much for tuning in and giving me your listening ears. Woohoo! This is a podcast for everyone, about everything, and it's to encourage, inspire, uplift you to go for your life. And it is presented and hosted by myself, Caro, and my sweet dog, Sparky. Give it up for him. I hope you're ready. Enjoy. Okay, so welcome back to another episode of Go For Your Life. And today is World Vegan Day. And I could not think of another person that I would love to spend this day with than Sharon Gannon. Yay! Welcome, Sharon G. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. It is my pleasure. I am very grateful to you, dear Caro, for your interest and your uh, devotion, commitment to veganism. Thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm so happy that we're doing this from uh, from Amsterdam to Woodstock. Um, connection through Zoom these days. It's uh, amazing how all this works these days. Um, I thought it would be lovely. I, um, I have your book here with me. So your book, Yoga and Veganism. Um, and I, I thought it would be really nice to read a little bit from, um, yeah, from the invocation from Loka Samasta Sukhano Bhavantu, and then kind of talk a little bit about uh, what you're writing. Because I, I really love it. I read this all the time in the classes and workshops. And I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's a really beautiful um, way of starting this conversation. Um, Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu, may all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. This is a prayer each one of us can practice every day. It reminds us that our relationships with all beings and things should be mutually beneficial if we ourselves desire happiness and liberation from suffering. No true or lasting happiness can come from causing unhappiness to others. No true or lasting freedom can come from depriving others of their freedom. If we say we want every being to be happy and free, then we have to question everything that we do, how we live, how we eat, what we buy, how we speak, and even how we think. That's you. You wrote that. <laughs> um, yeah, I just thought it would be so so nice to, on this wonderful day, World Vegan Day, to talk about specifically saying, like, if we want to be free, we cannot take freedom away from, from others and how you, how you see that. Well, I think that idea is not something that is... Um that I made up or <laughs> it is a yogic, uh, it's one of the yogic principles that we're all connected mm-hmm. and that we, what is realized in this state of enlightenment is that how we are all connected, that we're not actually separate beings. The world isn't out there coming at us. Mm-hmm. We're not victims of uh, external uh, force we ourselves together create the reality in which we live Mm -hmm. and um and it's just a a basic uh concept that how you are comes about by how you have treated others Mm-hmm. But it's like uh, actions are very powerful. An action is something that originates somewhere, and then it is pushed out, catapulted mm-hmm. into the atmosphere, let's say. And um, a brilliant man by the name of um, <laughs> Albert Einstein. <laughs> He uh, he made some 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 great uh, observations, and um, one of those was that space is curved. Mm-hmm. Space is curved. So when we're talking about actions, knowing that space is curved, any action, whether it's a physical action, 
a more subtle action like an action of speech or even very subtle action like a thought um, goes out there and goes all the way around because the base is curved, goes all the way around and then eventually, but inevitably, <laughs> back yeah. to, the, <laughs> to the originator. So everything that we do affects everyone and everything else, including ultimately ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so for that, when you know that, and it's a, it's a, it's just a fact, it's just uh, how things work in this, in this universe. Mm -hmm. If you know that, then you would be very careful about what you throw out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, my dear friend, the amazing activist, Julia Butterfly, she, uh, she has said some brilliant things, very wise woman. And um, she, uh, one of her sayings is, where is this place that we call away? <laughs> we throw something away. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't exist. There is no away. Mm. We are all living together in this space that affects everyone and everything else mm -hmm. um, and ourselves. And there is no, we're not separate. You see, the idea that we can throw something away, mm -hmm. that's a human, that's a human idea. And it um, implies that we feel that we can live in a bubble, that we are separate from mm -hmm. the rest of reality. Yeah, other beings, other things, mm -hmm. animals, trees, rivers, forests, etc. Yeah, um, and it's just uh, it it's a falsehood. It just um, it it is <laughs> it's not true. Mm -hmm. And you know, we uh, our actions affect everything and everyone. Yeah, because I think that you you once mentioned it as well in in a talk that I was present at. It's also about, you know, like the interrelate, that, that everything is also interrelated because I think a lot of people, like friends of mine as well, when they, they that, that eat meat, they say like, yeah, but it doesn't concern you. Like I'll have my burger and it's not really, it's not your problem. It's, you know, where is, I see it as well. Like it is still my problem because it is all, you know, all interrelated yes. with each other, you know? Exactly. And to, to use that, um, uh, kind of cop out, oh, it's none of my business. Mm -hmm. I should be tolerant <clears throat> of other people's views. Um, it, it doesn't really fall under the category of tolerance when we're dealing with other people who are eating animals. And mm -hmm. um, because it does, it, it's like, would you be tolerant if you were walking down the street and you, um, you saw a guy with a gun uh, shooting a bunch of people, would you just, you know, kind of roll your eyes and walk away and say, well, it's his business. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. I want to, you know, it, it, that's what he likes to do. So I should mm -hmm. accept that and be tolerant yeah. of um, his preferences. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, so that kind of sentiment, it, it, it's a bit ridiculous when we're dealing with things like eating each other. And that is what we're dealing with when someone is eating animals. And, and I'm sure your viewers, your audience uh, are well aware of the, the greater implications to the environment mm -hmm. uh, that meat and dairy industry yeah. um, impacts global warming and deforestation and mm -hmm. pollution and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't need to go into that. Mm -hmm. But I will say, as a vegan, <laughs> we, uh, as everything that we do, everything that we say, think, or do, affects us eventually. Mm -hmm. It goes out there and affects everyone and affects us eventually. Anger and shame and blame will also come mm -hmm. back to us. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so, you know, just to get angry at somebody who's, who's doing something that is destroying the planet and uh, ultimately hurting all of us and the animals, um, it, that's, that's, that's not appropriate behavior too, if we really want to make a kinder world. Mm-hmm. Because we're not being kind. So yes, it takes, it takes tremendous skill. skill. Mm-hmm. It takes tremendous skill to be persuasive <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and to live the way that you would like everyone else to live. And that would be, you have to be happy first. Mm-hmm. You want the animal to be happy. You have to be happy. Yeah. You have to, you, if you want the animals to be free, you have to be free yourself, meaning f- also free, not just from prison or in a cage, but free from debilitating negative emotions mm. and mm. habits like anger, mm-hmm. blame. Uh, these things are very toxic for everyone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can also not, you, I, I believe also there's something that I really learned well, also through yoga, through, you know, the practice is, is very much about, you know, like you're only going to make, you're only going to put fire on the, fu- like fuel on the fire, you know, it's like, it's already, you know, it, it, it just explodes and it's not, it's not gonna, yeah, it's, it's not changing anything if, if that's, if you're giving people, and I also, and I've seen it in my life, you know, being from any animal rights world that a lot of people are like, oh no, an angry, not another angry vegan, you know, like that kind of like, that sometimes I don't even dare to say the word that I'm vegan because you just know that people have this kind of, you know, like reaction to it straight away. Um, but I think that it's important to be kind, you know, to be kind first. It's, it, 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 yes. I mean, ultimately that is what's going to um, help the animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. save the world is our kindness not our anger yeah and um and also it pushes us to be creative yeah. <laughs> yeah you know i mean that was one of the things that when i first met you that struck me in such a awe-inspiring way that you were so, so positive mm-hmm. that you were so real and um embracing and welcoming hmm. and inviting to me, and I witnessed how you were with many other people too, and you were like that. And uh, it made you someone that we all wanted to be around. Mm. We didn't want to, you know, we, we didn't run the other way when we saw Carl coming because she's going to like hit us over the head about what we're eating. <laughs> no, it was like we were uh, attracted to you, you know, because a joyful person is attractive they mm-hmm. have a charisma yeah. that uh, and you want to you want to just hang out with them because you want to be like that too everyone wants to be happy mm-hmm. yeah i think that's something david once said as well like just you know just be that happy person and then they people come to you like what's your secret what is it that you do you know i want some of what you have you know um and i think that that's i i'm, I'm really grateful for you saying that because it's something that i really try to you know, I want to uplift others. I'm, I feel like I feel like a happy person, and I I want to give that to the world as well. Um, and I think that happiness, for me, also really comes from doing the right thing and and being good to others, and and always and and I had a lot of anger for sure, but trying to also kind of give that a place and um, and changing that energy of it is uh, because anger is also good. I mean, it gets you up. It gets you like, hey, I need to change something. Something is not right here. Um, but then to you, how do you then sort of you know shift that I think is is where a lot of the work lies <laughs> um, well to be motivated by anger is really it's kind of like it's a hit of adrenaline but mm-hmm. it can burn you out yeah yeah like, exactly you know, like adrenal burnout you know it's uh yeah. it's not long last it's not sustainable mm-hmm. it's certainly not and to discover other sources of motivation is a uh, much more of an exciting adventure i mean mm-hmm. anger is easy you know i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true right? and um but it's not our true nature mm-hmm. that's so it. to come 
as a yogi to try to discover our true nature and come from that place 